Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, this third Sunday after the Epiphany is dedicated to the Gospel of St. Matthew and especially to a teaching which has a great liturgical meaning we heard of two miracles worked out by our Lord. First of all, a leper who came to see Jesus. And look at the very first action he does when he met our Lord. He adored him. The very first movement of his life, of his soul, was to acknowledge Jesus divinity and then only after this he said to our Lord Lord if thou wilt make me whole cleanse me from this disease made me clean if thou will and uh, it is now important to notice Jesus reply to this man yes I will be thou made clean the word of our Lord is effective the word of our Lord is making this man clean and the leper disappeared but Jesus told the man to go to show himself to the priest in order to also be readmitted into the society. Jesus cleansed this man by saying his word. And there is another episode, another healing fact. A centurion Roman soldier came to see Jesus as well and to ask for a miracle. The centurion, a heathen, uh, asked Jesus and said, Lord, my servant at home is sick, grievously tormented. Please heal him. Jesus wanted to go and to the house of this man, to enter uh, a pagan's house in order to heal this, his servant. But we now have a beautiful expression of faith by this uh, centurion, Roman centurion. Jesus, I am not worthy that you shall enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Another liturgical expression that the liturgy has taken right from this holy gospel and that we repeat every Sunday at every Mass actually before receiving our Lord under our roof, in our soul, in our lives. Jesus, I'm not worthy. I'm a pagan. I'm a sinner. But I believe that if you say only the word, my servant shall be healed. At this expression, at this faith, Jesus also was astonished and said, I have not found such a faith in the whole of Israel. And this is already a sign that salvation is for everyone especially for the pagans who are waiting for this salvation. But again, in this important miracle, it is uh, 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 worth noting, noticing that Jesus said a word 
and his word healed the man. Jesus uh, did not go to the house, but he said, yes, I want that your servant is healed. And from that same hour when Jesus expressed his will, I will, the servant was made whole. The servant was healed. We in both episodes see the importance of Jesus' word, the word of God, which has a double effect. It is, first of all, the communication of a truth. It has a noetic meaning. It is a teaching. It is the statement, the statement of truth. And then, because it is God's word, it, is, it stands. That word is also effective, has a dynamic effect, which makes what it means. Jesus says, I will. And that word is causing the healing of the leper and the healing of this centurion's servant. The word of God is the truth, and it makes what that word means. But I wish also to guide you now to understand even uh, a deeper meaning of these two episodes. The deeper meaning has to be uh, seen and read in a liturgical context, which is the context in which now we find ourselves. Our liturgy, the way we profess our faith by believing in that word and by being made uh, healed, by being made clean by the same word, the word of our Lord. Let's go back to this first movement, adoration, which is a precondition in order to be in a mass and to be at prayer, especially in the liturgy, the very first interior movement, in order to be open to God's presence, to God's word is to adore. Adoration is an interior movement of our soul towards God, acknowledging his majesty and submitting ourselves to his power of love, the power of his immensity, of his divinity. And by adoring, we are now drawn into the mystery, into Jesus' presence. And we can say, Jesus, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now pronounce this healing word, and my life shall be changed. I will be converted to your love. But now there is a question to be answered. What is this word pronounced by Jesus within a liturgical context? Jesus said, I will be thou made clean. And the man was made clean. But in the liturgy, we take this expression from the Roman centurion, Jesus, I am not worthy that you shall come into my life right now, but say only the word, and I will be made clean. I will be saved. But what is this word spoken by Jesus in a liturgical context? We find the answer uh, in the moment that immediately uh, uh, follows this manifestation of humility, the priest says in ostending the body and blood of our Lord, the mystery of the Holy Eucharist, this is my body, this is my blood. Body, blood, 
soul and divinity of Christ. This is the word spoken by Christ. It is himself. The word is the Logos. The word is Christ. The one who was with God. The one who was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. The word is Christ, and this word is incarnate. This word is the Holy Eucharist, the word that Jesus speaks to make us clean, to give us life, to save our lives for eternity, is the Holy Eucharist that we receive in the Mass, the precious body, blood, soul and divinity. When we say, Jesus, I'm not worthy, I humble myself, Jesus' reply is, this is my body for you. This is my blood for you. Let us always look forward to receiving this precious body, blood, soul and divinity of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. But of course, we know that we have to be made clean in order to receive Jesus. And in fact, another moment when that healing word is spoken is in the sacrament of confession. Jesus, I'm not worthy, I'm a sinner. But say only the word. What is this word spoken by our Lord? I, I, Christ, absolve you from your sins. I, only Christ. This is the word spoken by him, which is a statement, I, Christ, the Son of God, the Word, the Logos, absolve you from your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in that precise moment, your soul is clean. Your life is uh, a new creation. You participate in this new creation because of the word, the word which is a statement of truth, the word which is dynamically producing its effect. That is your salvation, your eternal life. Two moments, my dear brethren then. The Holy Eucharist the word that gives us eternal life to be preceded by the word of the heavenly, eternal uh, word of Christ, the absolution to be partakers in truth and love of this divine banquet, the Holy Eucharist. Let us understand than this Holy Gospel in its fullness in this liturgical context, to uh, live it out and to have it as our own life, as the guideline for loving Jesus in deeds and with all our hearts. We pray to our blessed Mother Mary to be fellow disciples of Jesus and to always be prompted, first of all, by this inspiring example to adore Jesus and by this adoration in truth, we come into his presence. We hear the word, we are made clean. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit.